Hello? Uh, I can't do this. I, I just, I just killed someone. So to refresh your memory, last year India witnessed an incident that took it by storm like never before. It was perhaps one of the very few times that the entire country came out together to fight for justice for one single individual and emerge victorious, they did. You may have guessed it right, I am talking about none other than the infamous mob lynching of Shashank Mehrotra last year. In the beginning, it seemed like just another one of the many mob lynchings that very disgracefully take place in our country in the present day. But it was only once that the involvement of top political hotshots such as the former MP Vedant Prabhu in this incident came to light thanks to the breakthrough journalism of Banana Republic TV that the spark of anger among the public towards this incident quickly escalated into a raging inferno that ultimately culminated in nothing less than the arrest of Vedant Prabhu as well as the resignation of his entire government. It was what did seem like the biggest win for the country's public in the history of this democracy. And as we thought that the dust had just begun to settle on this incident, we have coming in fresh this morning from the Tihar jail, a fresh new twist in this tale that takes us all by surprise. Our exclusive reports confirm that the former member of parliament Vedant Prap who was serving time at the Tihar jail owing to his involvement in the Shashank Mehrotra mob lynching last year, has been released from the prison in the wee hours of today morning. This is following the decision by the court to grant him bail, citing a lack of evidence found against him in the investigation till now. So as his release has been kept a highly secretive affair, with no media presence whatsoever, all eyes are now going to be on the Jalsai Azamgarh to be held in a few days, where he according to his PA Anshpeet Singh Chaudhary, will be making his first public appearance since his resignation and subsequent arrest last year. This event, interestingly, is expected to be even more exciting this year for expected in attendance are the creme de la creme of the region's politics, including very much none other than Vedant Prabhu's own arch-rival and the successor to his seat in the parliament, Ms. Sri Ruti. So as we bring to you more from this exclusive developing hot story, we will be taking a short break. So till then, don't go anywhere. ...has been released from the prison in the wee hours of today morning. This is following the decision by the court to grant him bail, citing a lack of evidence found against him in the investigation till now. Call me when you need, call me in the morning, I'll be on the way, call me when you want, call me when you need. Hi. Hello. Wait. Are you really watching Karnab? I thought you were better than that. Listen, I just woke up and well, this was the first thing on the TV. So yeah, I'm sorry. I forgive you this time. Wait. Isn't this the same fest that you are organizing? Ah. Can't wait to spend an entire month working for the celebration of a murderer. Oh wait, he's technically not guilty. Uh, honestly, I'm so done with people pretending to be perfect and spotless when their hands are red with someone else's blood. It disgusts me. Capitalism, am I right? Fair, fair. Chalo, bye. 
Ja, cool, cool. Ja, bye. Sir, how are the services in the prison, sir? Did you like it? Oh, it was fabulous. Services were top tier. Can't wait to go back. Sir, sir, who do you want me to kill? My weapon is ready. Never mind. Arrange for the party. Sir, is there any secret messenger in the prison? How do you know we are planning something? Sir! Hmm. Hmm. What? Have you lost it? I asked you to arrange for all the party members for a meeting and this is what you have in mind. Truly worthless you are. Namaskar Prabhu ji. Namaskar, Namaskar. Hmm. How about you today? I thought you were loyal to me. You didn't even turn up at jail to receive me. No, no Prabhu ji. I was always loyal to you. And I'll stay loyal till my last breath. Where was this loyalty? Where was my bail? Where were you? I have been rotting in jail for the past year and you didn't even care to visit me once. Remember your roots, Anurag. If it were not for me, you would still be a low-level drug dealer on the streets of Azamgarh. Prabhuji, I was managing the party in your absence. And I was also handling all your side businesses. Hmm. Tell me about the trafficking business. I have sent the subject list to Saudi. And I am expecting to crack a big deal. But sir, you failed in the Hindi subject. Are you trying to hand in a ticket now? Prana! Hmm. I hope that the condition of the dry streets was not as dry as my condition in jail. Should I reach water tanker, sir? Go on, go on. Prabhuji, liquor business is booming since you went to jail. I see, I see. Good. What about the money I hid in the warehouse? Where is it? And is it safe? So, so. You get out. You please get out. I can't handle any more of your stupid questions. This is why we don't include you in business meetings. But, so. Please, please do us a favor and please get out. <sighs> this guy really makes me miss Uday. So where were we? We were talking about the money. Don't worry about that, Prabhuji. Everything is under control. Hmm, good. Now is everything in Azamgarh. Prabhuji, Jalsai Azamgarh is coming. Organizers were wondering if you can be the chief guest. But I took care of that. And I'll be going instead. After all, you must be tired. What? Why was I not informed about this before? Who gave you the authority to make decisions on my behalf? Are you trying to sit on my throne? Don't overload your peanut-sized brain, Anurag. Inform the organizers 
that Prabhuji will be there. Even though he's the party leader, but he cannot just behave like this. And how even my past becomes part of the conversation every time? Have I not done anything for this party? Do I not stand a chance to be the face of this party in Azamgarh? And what makes him believe that he can talk to me like that? Yes, let's just cancel all the personal appointments of this week. Just tell them that I am not available this week. Surprise! What is this sick joke? I will be taking jokes on you, although I'm quite sure that you wish I would. Listen, where are you getting with this? I don't understand. I'm not the diamond here. You, you're the murderer. You're the monster. You're the one who has blood on your hands. You're the one who snatched someone's innocent life. What are you talking about? A simple game. I'll tell you the rules and you play along. That's not so hard, is it? And, 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 and what makes you think I'll actually play along? You, you, you know I could report you to authorities, right? <laughs> oh, that's cute. You really think you have a choice? You're just as helpless and miserable as that guy you hit that night with your car. Now come on, let's move to the action instructions, alright? No, 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 listen. Just know that I can watch you. So please, don't force me to reveal to the public about the true murderous monster that you really are. Hey, what's up? Uh, nothing. Um, yeah, what, what were you up to? I'm just working for the Azam Gurdas. Oh, right, right. It's just that, like, I'm so sick of j just staying at home, you know? And I know you're so busy with Azam Gurd, but um, I, I, was, I was wondering if, if, if uh, I could come along with you for the fest, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, like, I, I believe it will do both of us some good to get out of our houses. Yeah, yeah, um, are you sure it won't, like, put you in an awkward spot, right? Um, uh, just register yourself as soon as we get there. You know I, how I dislike people who break the rules and it will be on my head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course, I'll, I'll register and everything. Cool. That's all I actually had to ask. I kind of have to go. I'll, I'll see you. Thank you so much. Okay, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. The Jalsai Azamgarh is finally here. Apart from everyone who's in anyone in politics being in attendance and the most delectable spread of food and drinks on offer, we have coming right up for you. 
a special stand up set curated by the famous comedian Anushri Sudan We Indians are known for having a community. Like you know, there's literally a billion of us. That's the least we can do. But yeah, we have a big community. US, Jaw, UK, Jaw, to Canada. So we are not even getting into it. Afghanistan, you chill it. So, as you will find out, Jaw, Jaw, ka, Bete ka, Dost ka, Mami ka, Bete ka, something you will find. And uh, considering I'm a white woman, so my relationships are global. Uh, I'm currently uh, rejecting three offers to live with a prince in Dubai. And uh, yeah, so yeah, freedom comes with its cost. But yeah, I'm not getting into that today. Today we're talking about community. So yeah, as we talk about community, the COVID-19 pandemic really brought out the sense of community we Indians have, and it really made us start valuing. the numbers we are growing in because every day i used to open my phone and see the truest form of human expression of love whatsapp through thick through thin the first lockdown second lockdown third lockdown every time i used to open my phone and don't write i didn't have friends but lakhanpur wali chachi really wanted me to not get her and uh, Lakhan Bihari Chachi was only one of those people who didn't want me to get corona. There were a oh, lot no. of Tauji, Babuji, Chacha ji, Chachi ji. There were a, a, there were a lot of them. So too many messages can kind of uh, bug your mind up, right? Like you don't know what to believe in. फिर मेरी तरह रात के चार बजे दूध में हल्दी डाल के ऊपर से कफ सिरप और सोया सॉस डाल के तुम लोग बेहोश नहीं हो ना. So I have brought a guideline of how to recognize what's fake on WhatsApp. So to recognize what's fake or not, sir. Uh, first of all, the first thing you need to do is automatically assume that everything on WhatsApp is fake. Right? That's the very first thing to do. And the second thing you need to do is believe in certain messages, and those certain messages uh, have to be recognized. So I'll tell you about today how to recognize those messages. The first thing to do is to Read the ending of the message. The ending of the message has to be, "Ye fake news nahi hai. This is true, and forward this to ten people. Otherwise, tumhari mama jayegi." And uh, not just the uh, fear of your mom dying, but other things too. Uh, the very fact that the author made us realize that the author <laughs> made us realize that it's true makes us believe that. The person must have done a lot of research, right? Like, he must have googled, safari'd, and who knows? Like, first, he the person had to remind us twice, which means it is true. And the second thing you need to do is to see the emojis. If there's a Bharat ka chhanda, forward it, forward it. It's true, and do it at that very moment. You shouldn't care what it is, how it is. It's true because it is Bharat ka chhanda, and I don't want to jail. So that is my time, guys. Thank you, and I'm officially done. Assembly polls are coming. We think we have a good chance this year. We have some very good leaders for the chief ministers.
breaking news of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Former MP Vedant Prabhu, who had just been released from prison a few days back on bail, has passed away. This untimely death of the former MP has taken the entire nation by shock. And as speculations around the cause of his death are rife, we on Banana Republic TV have joining us tonight the man himself, Mr. Trishan, the officer from the UP police who is leading the investigation into Mr. Prabhu's death. Welcome, Mr. Trishan. Thank you for having me over here. So, Mr. Trishan, given Mr. Vedant Prabhu's clearly checkered history, what do you have to say about this possibly being the case of foul play as opposed to a natural death? Everything is purely speculative at this point and we are waiting for the forensics report to come in. Once that does come in, we'll analyze it and um, definitely get a little bit more clarity uh, regarding what happened and how it happened. Post which we can, of course, um, give the public also some uh, information regarding this situation. Given that he died at no other place but the Jalsai Azamgarh, in the presence of all the political personalities in the region, and that two days after he was released from jail, don't you think the sequence of events is a little too far-fetched to be a mere coincidence? Is there something more to this than what we be I? We're definitely looking at this case from all possible angles. And um, once we do get a little bit more clarity as to what the situation is, we'll step up our game and um, also let the uh, public know about what happened once we have concrete facts. But until then, I request everyone to maybe stop being so speculative about it and stop fueling conspiracy theories. You step up your game once you have concrete facts. I mean, do you get the kind of impact the sort of a suspicious death of a former member of parliament is having on the morale of the entire nation? And you're telling me you're waiting for concrete facts to actually do your job? I mean, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for more people from his party to lose their life in this manner? Like, what are you waiting for? What is it going to take before you actually get to doing something? Mr. Karnam, I think I've answered all of your valid questions and I don't have time to answer these futile questions of yours that are simply fueling conspiracy theories so that you can spike the views of your channel and maybe earn a penny or more. So, until that, until you have any valid questions, um, I don't have any time for you. And um, as far as I'm concerned, this interview is absolutely over. Um, thank you, Brado. I don't have any more time to waste on this uh, for your futile questions. Wow. So that was Mr. Trishan from the UP police, ladies and gentlemen. And as a result of this highly lackadaisical job by the police, the demands for a CBI probe into Mr. Prabhu's death are rising fast from all quarters. In the hope that at least the CBI probe, if not the lackadaisical probe by the UP police, will finally lead to something. That's all from this story from us tonight. And as soon as we have something, we assure you that you will be the first to know. So till then, stay home and stay safe. And keep watching Banana Republic TV for daily news and updates. Hey Shivanshika, did you hear that Anurag is missing? Maybe he is the one who is killed Vedant and is now absconding. Hello. So what's the report like? Okay. former MP's death and now his top party AD's death. Is there something fishy 
or is this the same old story of people once again settling scores among themselves by taking the law into their own hands good evening ladies and gentlemen you are watching india's number one news channel banana republic tv and in this week's edition of junky path we have joining us none other than the deceased mp vedant prabhu successor ms shri rudhi who will be telling us about her views on this entire fiasco thank you so much karna i'm glad to be on your esteemed show so ms shri rudhi two primary theories are being circulated right now as an explanation for what is being called a double murder the first one interestingly is that this is a case of political vendetta by one of his political rivals possibly including your party <laughs> while the other theory is obviously that this has been done by someone from the public as a revenge for what mr prabhu and his party members did last year for which according to popular public opinion they were just never punished enough huh. while the allegations of a party's involvement in this are as baseless as they can get today i would like to focus on how and why regardless of any political affiliations mr prabhu's death is wrong and problematic for our country and our legal system my party and i have always stood for truth and justice the truth and justice in pursuance of which i with your help exposed and brought down mr prabhu and his party last year for their vicious actions and the same truth and justice which today makes me deeply condemn the death of mr prabhu in this unlawful manner so what has really changed since last year up till this episode that's making you take the exact opposite side of this matter right now Karnab it is very simple that this time it's not the public or the politicians or the media but the courts themselves who have come to conclusion after a thorough investigation that there isn't enough evidence to implicate Mr Prabhu i hence feel that the court's decision ought to be accepted and respected by everyone no matter what and regardless of their personal opinions on it this is because judiciary is the top most adjudicating authority in our country whose judgments are final and prevailing over everyone else's and if these decisions are not respected and are just overthrown by people in this manner our entire justice system and legal system is under threat as the authority of the utmost dispensers of justice is delegitimized in this manner The most common justification for such behavior on the part of the public is that the judiciary is just no longer competent enough to do its job, be it due to the high pendency of cases or the loopholes in investigation that like many an offender get off the hook. So tell me, in your opinion, is this a good enough reason for people to completely lose their faith in the judiciary and supersede it by themselves taking over the job of rendering justice? Absolutely not. Granted that the judiciary suffers from a number of limitations and shortcomings today but there is no doubt it's still the most competent body for the adjudication of cases and this una da bano de ya kala un munde bara un munde aw de si je ki okay sorry where was i so yeah talking about it this is because with this vast legal experience and expertise coupled with its commitment to the principles of natural justice and its unbiased nature it is preferable to any other adjudicating entity like the media and public these may not only suffer from a lack of knowledge or skill on the concerned issue but they may also be inherently prejudiced the judiciary has at the end of the day vested in itself powers by the constitution to do what it does so any other entity taking that away is just downright unacceptable by any means so from the days of the ltt and the operation blue star the question is have things really changed in india until now if you ask me i would say they haven't if at all they've just become worse 
We now have other means too of implicating and punishing people without any legal authority. Taking the two components of last year's Shashank Mehrotra fiasco itself, we see an increasing number of mob lynching taking place around us today. These are not only aimed to supersede the judiciary in subjudicious manners, but also seek to punish people for the things that are not even legally prohibited in the first place, like consuming beef. And this is despicably deplorable. And as far as the new trend in town, that is media trials are concerned, then I think Arnab, you are better qualified than me to have an opinion on this, being synonymous with this very term yourself. <laughs> Well, you're right. So yeah, what I did in the Shashank case last year is commonly referred to as a textbook example of a media trial. And personally, I don't blame people who think this way. For in an era in which the media is fast losing its objectivity, a clear distinction has to be drawn between what is, on one hand, the genuine reporting of facts and bringing to light of different viewpoints and facts, or even the amplification of public voice by the media, and what is, on the other hand, the adjudication and judgment by the media on certain cases with the very limited facts and evidence that they have and that is something which they do even before the courts have made their own decision in this matter but so at the end of the day yes you go on so but then considering it's ultimately the courts have the final say on the judgment is this really so wrong for the media to do given that in the process it still does bring out some additional facts and truth it feels like you're answering you're interviewing me now and i'm supposed to be answering you but yes answering your question yes it is absolutely wrong and this is simply because of the media's only potent power to influence public knowledge and opinion to an extent sometimes even more than the courts themselves so while the legal maxim may very well be that a person is innocent until proven guilty very unfortunately in our country you cannot even say that a person is guilty until proven innocent for the simple reason that people have been influenced by the media and such media trials to such an extent that they won't even believe the courts when they pronounce a given person as not guilty and instead based on what they have been made to believe is true by the media will go on to vilify the person who has been implicated in this manner denying them of their very basic human rights which i think every single individual including a former mp or even a disgraced former mp is rightly entitled to So I think it's important that we leave our audience for the night, as well as the whole nation at large, with this message: that any such action which falls under this umbrella of superseding the judiciary and taking the law into one's own hands must be refrained from at all costs. Failing which, our entire system of law and order, justice, and administration stands to inevitably break down and disintegrate completely. And that is something which, as unfortunate as it gets, is already in fast progress as we speak
After weeks and months of relentless search and investigation by multiple authorities ranging from the CBI to the UP police into what were initially being thought as being three separate murders, one of the former MP Vedant Prabhu, second of his AD Anurag Singh, and third of the organizer of the Jalsai Azamgarh Fest, Pukit Goyal, the UP police this morning seem to have finally found the connection that ties all of these three murders together. And what's more surprising, this person is not even any top political hotshot or hitman for that matter, as people may have speculated. But this person is all but a regular normal girl who lives in Azamgarh and who goes by the name of Shivanchika. Shivanchika, who's the culprit and accused currently of all of these three murders, has interestingly this morning surrendered to the UP police and in her statement has told them that the first two murders were committed by her upon being blackmailed by someone into doing so. And as to the third murder, she claims that her friend Pulkit Goyal came to know that she was the one behind the first two murders and hence, in a fit of rage to save herself, she ended up killing him too. So the main question in the minds of the public right now is obviously that of what was Shivanchika's motive in doing all of this? What is it that took her, being a regular normal girl living in Azamgarh, to so ruthlessly take the lives of three innocent people, including two hotshot political personalities of the region, like Vedant Prabhu and Anurag Singh, so cold-bloodedly in the way that she did? People are also wondering whether she could have managed to do all of this all on her own without taking anyone's help, given that she was, at the end of the day, just another normal person. And so, is there another person who's actually behind her in all of this and who's been calling the shots? Owing to this new development, this case has hence become centered around this new question of whether or not the claims that have been made by Shivanchika to the police of being blackmailed into killing Mr. Vedant Prabhu and Anurag Singh are true. And in the event that they are true, who is really this person who's behind all of these murders that have taken not just the town of Azamgarh but the entire country by shocking surprise over the last couple of months? And who is this person who so badly and cold-bloodedly has wanted to get Mr. Vedant Prabhu and Anurag Singh killed? Since a young age, we have been taught that we must always be fair and just. However, the truth is that that only works in fairy tales. There are few who live like kings and queens while the rest of us suffer hidden by their shadows. Oh no, calling the world a fair place would be a lie. The only way one can get what he truly deserves is by snatching it. My brother was an innocent man with a pure heart, but he died a horrible and painful death at the hands of Vedant Prabhu and his merciless goons. Vedant's clock started ticking the second he murdered my brother. The police failed to put Vedant behind bars because of his power and influence. And that is why I was forced to take law into my own hands. This is the only way I could avenge my brother. That's how this little game of chess began. Shivanchika was my pawn. I knew she would do anything to save herself and I took advantage of that very weakness. Shivanchika had already gotten away with one hit and run case. She needed to pay for her crimes. Oh, and how brilliantly I shot three targets with one bullet. Vedant and Anurag paid for their sins and Shrivanchika paid for hers. I don't know if what I'm doing is right or wrong, if it could even be called justice or if I would simply end up paying for my own sins. But I do know this, that I have rid the world of three murderous monsters. Finally, Shashank's soul can now rest in peace and it's funny to see this closed case would always remain unsolved.